Hello, and welcome to Protective Strategies, another great webcast from Schwab Coaching. My name is Ben Watson. I am an education coach and senior manager here at Charles Schwab. I am joined out there in the chat by Cameron May, also an education coach, 20 plus year veteran of the financial markets and a good friend of mine. Cameron's going to be there to help answer questions along the way. And thank you to all of you, whether you're here watching this live or whether you're watching the recorded version of this webcast. Thanks for joining us. And today, we're going to talk about customizing callers to a specific set of circumstances. Now, I've been fascinated by the word bespoke for a long time. So we're going to talk about bespoke callers. It's just something I came up with in this discussion. So we're going to talk about what that means as we go into this discussion today. But thank you again for being here. Welcome to all of you. Thanks for joining us. A number of familiar names out there in the chat. A couple of quick housekeeping items that I want to get to really quickly. Remember, everything that we talk about simply for illustrative and educational purposes only should not be considered an individualized recommendation or endorsement of any particular security strategy or idea. Remember that options carry risk. They are not suitable for all investors. Make sure that you're aware of the characteristics and risks of standardized options before trading any option strategy. Remember also the multiple leg option strategies will involve multiple commissions. Be aware of that fact. Be aware of the fact that when you're long an option, there is the potential to lose all of the money invested in that option. If you're short an option, there's the potential for that option to be assigned early. So be aware of all of those characteristics before you get involved in trading. Remember that Schwab doesn't recommend the use of technical analysis as the sole means of investment research. We're gonna be using the paper money version of the Think or Swim desktop software platform. Not a guarantee of future success out there in the real world. Great learning environment. However, it doesn't do a couple of things. Namely, does not facilitate the early assignment of short options. And of course, it doesn't guarantee that you're gonna make money uh, transitioning from paper money trading to live trading. Now, we're also going to be talking about short options. So once again, that reminder, anytime you're short an option, there's the potential that that option could be assigned early and the trader might have to meet the obligation associated with that short option. Now, uh, past performance of any security strategy doesn't guarantee future results or success. We're gonna talk a little bit Uh, about a comparison between protective put options and stop orders. We're going to discuss stop orders specifically as they relate to some of the risks and challenges of those stop orders. And we'll discuss that along the way. And of course, uh, remember, if we do happen to mention futures, which we likely will not in today's discussion, futures and futures options trading involves substantial risk, not suitable for all investors, requires separate trading authorization. So just be aware of that fact. So uh, once again, I notice a number of familiar names in uh, our discussion today. And Cameron is well suited to uh, answering those questions. In fact, Cameron, I believe, taught this class for me last week when I was out on the road uh, teaching in person in uh, Tampa and Sarasota and Atlanta. So thanks to Cameron for filling in uh, in this webcast. Uh, And as we do this great opportunity right now as we're talking about this to click on subscribe if you have not already done so. Subscribe gives you the ability to set notifications for when we post new webcasts, for when we go live with webcasts, for when we post the archives for the webcast. So you can do that by subscribing if you have not done so already. Uh, Don't click if you've already subscribed and unsubscribe yourself because that wouldn't necessarily be a good thing. But of course, remember that this is at no cost to you to subscribe. So we're gonna talk a little bit about in general terms, uh, some of these items on the agenda, what are protective strategies, specifically callers, in today's discussion, discuss protective applications, and we're gonna look at examples on the Thinkorswim platform. So before we go any further, I'm gonna transition over to that Thinkorswim platform. We'll take a look at what's going on out there in the market, and I'll talk a little bit about this discussion, kind of what brought me to this topic today. And that topic is really how do we customize 
uh, caller strategies, the caller strategy to uh, the needs that we might be seeing on a particular chart or particular market circumstance. And uh, as I mentioned, and, and Cameron, I think, probably relates to this very well. Um, the English have uh, a way of using words, and they have certain words that they use that, that kind of become hallmarks, if you will, of, uh, of, of maybe the next level of intensity of things, right? So bespoke. The word bespoke is one of those words that I've always kind of been fascinated by. And uh, it simply means, in, if we translate this into American English, uh, that uh, it's something that is custom made. So we're going to talk about bespoke callers today, meaning simply adjusting a caller to match the certain circumstances that we might be seeing. Now, we're going to focus on a particular type of caller in today's discussion. And that particular type of caller that we're going to customize or make bespoke, thank you, Cameron, for putting out there, putting that out there, that we're going to make bespoke is a caller intended for the purpose of setting boundaries on the movement of the price of an underlying stock, right? So setting the boundary on the downside movement of the underlying stock, but also capping potential upside movement but allowing for that upside movement to occur. So the, the rough equivalent or the rough synthetic to what we're gonna talk about today in terms of, calendar, of collar spreads would be something like a buy right covered call where the intent was to own the underlying stock, sell the covered call and allow the stock to be called away for the purpose of generating a little bit of income and taking a profit potentially on the upward movement of the price of the stock. You'll see what I mean here in just a second. So yeah, exactly, I do the same thing too, Cameron. I use it when I'm trying to sound fancy and uh, and be an Anglophile. All right, let's take a look at what's going on in the SPX at the moment. SPX at the moment uh, had pulled back over the course of the last few days, found perhaps a little bit of a support level, still seems to be kind of stuck in this very kind of low energy range. If we look at the RSI, not a lot of momentum, not a lot of movement here on the SPX. So just really kind of biding its time here at the moment. We'll get the NASDAQ doing kind of the same thing, kind of neutral movement in terms of the NDX. Uh, in the RSI, just really not giving us much uh, oomph one direction or the other, kind of sitting right up against, laying right up against in these kind of two candles down onto that diagonal trend line. So just not a lot of movement here. And uh, that would suggest perhaps a bit of wait and see, if you will, although it is, think about this, it is a holiday shortened week. And so with spring break in the works around the country in various places, it may very well be that uh, investors, uh, institutional traders perhaps have already started to uh, disperse for the long holiday weekend. And so not seeing a lot of movement. Now, where we are seeing potentially some movement is in the Russell 2000 with some strong move back up to this resistance level, a little bit of energy, although slightly less, a bit of a bearish divergence here. But in the two major indices, the two kind of broad market, larger cap indices, the, the uh, S&P 2000, uh, excuse me, the S&P 500, the SPX, and the NASDAQ, just not seeing a lot of movement uh, at all. Let's take a look at the VIX and just get a sense of what's going on with volatility. Volatility back down in the upper 12s in terms of volatility, kind of back into that range that it was in in the December, January timeframe. So a little bit of a collapse in volatility kind of across the board. So not a lot of movement. On the other hand, you think about this, and, and this is kind of that point where the market has been moving higher. It's kind of sitting there and not with a lot of energy moving to the upside and things are quiet. This is a bit of that time in the typical horror movie when somebody pokes their head out the window of the cabin in the woods and says, it's quiet out there, too quiet. And then that's when, you know, all heck breaks loose, right? So, uh, so perhaps that may be the scenario here. Volatility is low, the market is low energy, 
things are quiet, perhaps too quiet. Now, I'm not saying that the market is going to move or in, in any way, shape, or form making any kind of a prediction because that's not what technical analysis does. As a matter of fact, if you want to learn a little bit more about what technical analysis does and, and how it works, one of the great things that you can do is join Cameron for his Getting Started with Technical Analysis webcast series where he breaks down a lot of different technical indicators uh, into how those technical indicators work. And we just had a great in-person workshop in Atlanta over the last weekend where we spent an entire day on Friday talking about technical analysis and how to use technical analysis to make informed trading decisions. So a lot of great ways to apply uh, those types of ideas. I'll let Cameron go ahead and put in the, the link there to his getting started with technical analysis webcast. But here's where we're kind of sitting at the moment. Now, what that says is there's just not a lot of potential movement in the market, but that might be the point in time when some traders may look to protect positions against downside movement with the possibility of upside potential. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shift our gear over here a little bit. We're going to go to the, our single grid, and I'm going to take a look at an individual stock that is perhaps defying that general... Yeah, we. Oh, Kevin, I like that. That's good. We never use the Q word in the fire department with good reason. By the way, I met Kevin uh, in uh, Sarasota last week. Great guy. Uh, thank you, Kevin, for being there and uh, and spending some time. It was good to meet you uh, at that event in Sarasota. So, taking a look at what's going on at the moment, right? We've got a stock that is moving. We're seeing some upward movement today. As a matter of fact, pretty good breakout move. Uh, above a resistance level. So a trader might uh, think about this in the context of if a trader owned the stock already, selling a uh, or, or creating a, a covered call, perhaps to offset, bring in a little bit of premium to offset uh, that upside movement and, and that downside potential. Uh, if a trader didn't own the underlying stock already, the potential to create a buy right type of uh, covered call. And so a buy right covered call would be buying the stock and selling the covered call at the same time. Now we're going to add, we're going to do the same type of thing, but we're going to add one additional piece to the mix. So in this particular account, uh, in this discussion, um, in, in, in this example portfolio, remember this is simply an example. I don't own shares of deer. What we're going to look at here in this particular case is the idea of buying the shares of deer, selling the call option, and buying a put option to provide protection, or at least define the downside risk. Now, some traders might look at this and say, all right, fine, I get that, but why not just, instead of paying money to buy the put option to define the downside risk, why not just use a stop loss order uh, of some sort to define that downside risk? And the the simple reason to that is is this a stop order is not a guarantee of where that order might get filled right so if we were to put a stop order on this trade let's say we were to buy the stock and we were to put a stop order some short percentage or small percentage below that level of support that the stock broke up through and that's our stop the stop might trigger at that level, let's say 395, but it might fill substantially lower if the price of the stock were to go to the downside. But buying a put option defines specifically and precisely where that exit point could be because that gives the buyer of that put option a right to sell the stock at that specific price, at that specific strike price. And if the price of the stock continues to go down, doesn't require the owner of the put option to sell the underlying stock. In fact, gives that uh, that trader the opportunity to make a choice between selling or holding on and using that increase in the price, the value of the put option to offset that potential downside movement. Right. So now that being the set, that that being the case, sometimes those put options as protection could be potentially expensive. So some traders may use the sale of the call option 
as a means to offset the cost of that protective put, right? So what we're gonna do first of all is we're gonna do this whole thing all at once as an analog or a synthetic of that cash secured, or excuse me, not cash secured, buy right covered call strategy, right? And if we were gonna do a buy right, uh, on this stock uh, or or any stock, what we might do is define the point at which we would look at uh, selling the covered call, first of all. And so let's say in this particular case, we're going to sell the covered call if the price of the stock were to go up to this next level of resistance up here around 420. So I'm just going to draw that line in here up around 420. So if we were going to create a, a, a buy right covered call, uh, one of the ways to do that would be go to the trade tab and then go to uh, whatever time frame to go until expiration the trader wanted to use in selling the covered call, the duration of the covered call. And let's say in this case, the 3rd of May, that's 37 days to go until expiration, opening that up and then changing this layout spread to covered stock, in which case the price here in the ask column based on that strike price, so let's go down to our strike price that we were looking at, which was the 420 strike, that price at that ask price would be the net cost of buying the underlying stock and selling the covered call, right? Selling the call option. So that cost right there, that 420 strike in a covered stock position or a buy right covered call, if we were to just simply left click on that ask price, you can see what that order entails buying 100 shares of the stock and selling the 420 strike call option for a net cost of $400. Then if the price of the stock were to go up, you know that you can simply measure the difference or, or uh, mathematically dis determine the difference between the $400 price of purchase of the stock and sale of the covered call and the call strike, the 420 strike and say, all right, this has a potential profit of, of $20 given the price of the stock moving higher and having that stock called away at that strike price. That would be the way that uh, a buy right covered call strategy might be evaluated. But we're gonna do one additional step here. Now we could do this as a combo. We could buy the stock and then we could come in and do this, but we're gonna, be, we're gonna create a bespoke or a custom caller with the purchase of stock here okay so we're going to stay in the same place we're going to say all right let's go back to the chart let's say i want to sell the 420 call buy the underlying stock and then exit the trade if the price of the stock drops below 390 that support level that's right here that's the point at which we would buy the protective put sell the call up here, buy the stock, buy the protective put here. So we know our circumstances, right? We know that in this particular case, let me just line this out so that we can see it. Here's our, oops, here's our, grab my annotation tool. There we go. Uh, let's see if it's going to let me annotate here. There we go. Okay, oh. it's not letting me annotate. So stand by, let me see if we can get that working here real quick. Not gonna let me annotate. So sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't. Nevertheless, nevertheless, here's where we are, okay? Price of the stock goes up, stock could potentially be called away at 420. Price of the stock goes down, we've got a protective put, and that put defines the area or the price at which that stock could be sold. We've got the ownership of the underlying stock. How do we create this all at once and customize it to what we want? So we're gonna go in this particular case to the trade tab once again. We're gonna change this spread, which normally we've looked at as single, and we've also looked at here as covered stock. Now, instead of just creating the collar and synthetic, because we don't own the underlying stock yet, we're gonna come down here to where it says collar with stock. Collar with stock. And we're gonna change this spread to collar with stock. 
So now we're going to go to the same time frame, right? This 37 days to go until expiration, 3rd May uh, expiration of options, all right? And in this case, that same scenario exists here in terms of our strike price and our bid and ask prices. So we're going to use calls. Remember, we're going to be using a call option to define the upside move and a put option to define the downside move. So what we need to do in just a general place to start might be to find your at the money position in building a bespoke uh, caller trade here. So our at the money the stock's currently trading at 406. We're going to find the 405 uh, the 405 strike price here. So if I come over here to the left-hand side, remember I'm going to be buying the underlying stock. So this is going to be a net debit trade. So I'm going to be clicking on the ask price. And if I left click on the ask price, here's what I'm creating is an order to buy the underlying stock, buy the put option and sell the call option. Okay. Now, if we were to just do that right now, right? And we were to just do that, buy the stock, sell the call, buy the put at the same strike price, at that 405 strike price. If we right click over here and we analyze this trade, you can see that that's pretty much a straight line and we are losing the amount that we're paying in that trade. And we're kind of stuck there, right? Uh, based on that, because the stock has nowhere to go up and the stock has nowhere to go to the downside, but we're not gonna do that. So let's delete that. Let's come back over here to our trade tab and let's customize or make this bespoke to what we want it to do. So we're gonna start with the call option. We've got that short call right here. And we know by cross-checking against the chart that we wanted to sell the 420 call option, okay? That's the first step in creating this as a bespoke caller. Let's go back to our charts really quick. There's our 420 call, uh, strike that we're selling the call option. And here's our 390 strike that we're buying the put option. So we're gonna go back to the trade tab and we're gonna adjust that put strike to the 380 put strike. And now based on that, based on those two levels, if we open up our lock here, okay, our cost for the trade, if we click on confirm and send, the cost on the trade is 403. What potentially could be made in this trade, right? Well, now gives us that opportunity to come over to the analyze tab and see what this trade looks like, okay? Now, this looks synthetically like a long call vertical, doesn't it? Or pretty close to a buy right covered call with the exception of that put option defining our risk to the downside. So our maximum theoretical gain in the trade is if the price of the stock moves up to that 420 level and the stock is called away, maximum theoretical gain, right? And in this case, 1667. Maximum theoretical loss is if the price of the stock goes down to the long put strike, to the long put strike, and that trade is um, is now, or that, that put option is exercised, and that put option is used to sell the underlying stock, right? Because that gives us the right to sell the underlying stock. So uh, Wiley asks the question, well, what's the delta of this trade? And if we think about this from that standpoint, think about what we've got. We've got 100 deltas from the long stock position, right? That's a big driver, right? The put option, if we were to go back to our trade tab and uh, we were to open this up a little bit, let's take this back to uh, our single so our put option is going to have that 380 strike minus 14 deltas, right? And our long call option is going to have, our long 420 call is going to have a 35 cent delta. So we're essentially left, if we were to think about it, let's take 15. So we're essentially left 
with a long stock delta of 100 and the collar, that combination collar, a net delta of about 20 cents, right? Still bullish, and this is still a bullish trade. It benefits from that bullishness. That's a great question to ask, Wiley. So we can also do some of that here on the Analyze tab by changing the metric to delta. And so we can get a sense of what that expectation is. So here's the 380 strike. Here's the 420 strike. We can see that, that in that range right there of max theoretical gain, that delta, that long stock delta of one, basically is the big driver in this particular trade. So we change that back to PNL open. We see that traditional space. Now, here's the thing. Here's where if we weren't looking at the chart and we wanted to adjust and maybe customize some more, nip and tuck a little bit of that vertical spread or basically this uh, collar trade, we could do that right here. Let's say we think, okay, now maybe that downside potential risk is a little bit too much. There's a little bit too much downside risk. So maybe we bespoke this a little bit more. I don't know if that's a verb here, bespoking that. We adjust that a little bit. We move that put strike to the 390 strike. We'll open up the lock. It's going to cost a little bit more because it's closer to the in the money position. But now we think about it, right? The price of the stock could go to 420. And we now, uh, that's where that stock could be called away. And that uh, net cost to enter the trade would be 404.92. So we think about that in terms of our net theoretical maximum gain goes down a little bit, but but protects us a little bit higher in terms of that uh, possible uh, theoretical maximum loss in the trade. So this is where we can make that adjustment a little bit uh, tighter. So what we're going to do now, since we've adjusted it here, I'm going to come back over to our trade tab, and we'll pop up our trade uh, info down here at the bottom, and we'll adjust this. So we brought that back up to the 390 strike instead of the 380 strike. We'll open up the lock so that we get the current price. I'm going to go to confirm and send. I'm going to put this in our protective strategies group. So the cost of the trade is going to be the cost of buying the underlying stock and creating the caller, but it's going to be capital intensive, right? Just like a cash secure, or excuse me, a, a cash secured put, or just like a, a uh, buy right covered call strategy, there is the potential to see that gain. And if it goes the other direction, we've got that protection in place, that defined risk to the downside. So max theoretical profit, 15, 14. Max theoretical loss in down to that uh, long put strike uh, is 1486. So we can click on send. Make sure that we read through any alerts that are here. We'll go ahead and click on send and we'll fire that order off. And now you gotta think about this in that context, though the, the possibilities of um, getting this order filled, you've now got three legs if we go to our working orders, you've now got three legs that need to be filled in this particular case. Buying the underlying stock, buying the put option, and selling the call option. So this may require a bit of patience in terms of getting that order filled, okay? So that's my first example of a bespoke uh, caller for a long stock position that we don't already own, okay? So I'm gonna look at a couple of other examples here. Uh, let's take a look at, let's go back to our chart here. Let's go to Honeywell, H-O-N. And we're gonna take a look at Honeywell. And once again, uptrending stock, it's kind of pulled back down. It's maybe given us this little bit of a inverted head and shoulders, kind of basing pattern, if you will, breaking out and potentially moving back towards a resistance level. Once again, another, scenario that some traders might use to set up a buy right covered call defining the point at which they might exit the trade now the flexibility here is that the call option could be bought back 
and, uh, and let the stock be uncovered. And the put option is still in place if it starts to move in the opposite direction. There's flexibility in that collar, in this bespoke collar that we are building here. So we might say just in terms of the, the, the creation of this trade, a move up to the 210 mark and perhaps a move below uh, this support. Let's say that support level right here at the 200 level, just for the sake of our discussion here. So now we've defined, we've kind of measured, if you think about it, and, and if you've ever been measured for a bespoke suit or bespoke clothing, you know, you stand there and the tailor measures and marks with chalk and pins things. So we're doing our measuring and marking here, right? The, the upside move to the 210 mark, the downside move to the 200 mark. That's the, the definition of our trade. So we're going to go back over here to the trade tab and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to take that spread and we're going to change that spread from single to collar with stock. And in this particular case, we're going to look out at the strike that has a little bit more volatility or the expiration that has a little bit more volatility, 30 days to go until expiration. That's the 26th April. We're going to find the at the money strike in this particular case. The other way that you could do it is you could find the, the short call strike, the call option strike. So in this case, we'll go back to our measuring and marking. That's the 210 strike. Go back to the trade tab. We'll go out here to the 210, and uh, we're going to click on the ask price because we're buying this. It's a net debit trade. So now all we have to adjust in this particular case would be that put strike. So we'll cross-check against the chart in this particular case, and that put strike is going to occur at the 200 mark. So go back to trade. We'll adjust this down to the 200 strike. We'll open up that lock. And we'll see that our cost in the trade in this particular case is 204. Maximum theoretical gain would be if the price of the stock were to go to 210. Capital intensive because we've got to buy the underlying stock. But if we right click and throw this over on the analyze tab, now we can see uh, what that trade looks like. And if we need to do a little bit of trimming and nipping and tucking, then it can be done here and adjusted and determined and evaluated to see if it fits. Make sure that that is the appropriate scenario. Now, one of the, again, the one of the things to think about is looking and measuring and making sure that we're comfortable with what that theoretical maximum gain is. In this case, up around that uh, the short strike or the short call option, 556, and down here at our short strike or our long put strike, excuse me, 431. So still a little bit more gain than we stand to lose potentially if the price of the stock goes to the downside. Now, again, flexibility. You think about it, you get a suit made for you and it's going to fit better, right? Theoretically. So one of the scenarios here, one of the things to think about in consideration is that customizing or making this spread bespoke means that maybe there's some flexibility in this spread, meaning once again, if the price of the stock starts to take off, that possibility of buying back the call option and eliminating that call option uh, obligation on the upside and allowing the stock to run gives the flexibility for the stock to be more bullish. If the stock starts to move against uh, the trader, then once again, that put option is in place and that could be adjusted as well by rolling. And again, remote rolling, not a magic wand, simply a means to adjust a position. So that's one way to think about this in this context. So we're gonna leave this one alone. We're gonna go back to the trade tab. We could place the trade right there from the analyze tab as well, but I wanna go back here and take a look at this and we're gonna click on confirm and send. We're gonna read through this order, make sure that we're aware of it. Maximum theoretical profit on the trade, 554. Maximum loss, the cost of the trade is going to be the cost for the underlying stock, but we know that we've defined our risk using that protective put option to 446. Make sure that we read through any alerts that exist there, and we're going to go ahead and click on send, and we'll fire that order off, and we'll see if that order fills as well. Let's do one more example just for, uh, for repetition's sake. 
uh, and that is in this case LMT. So we're going to go back up right here to the chart. We're going to go to LMT, Lockheed Martin, and again, stock that's been on the rise, starting to run to the upside. So that means that call options have been getting a little bit more expensive. We know that we've got a resistance level overhead, perhaps we'll call it right here where that resistance has been at the 466 mark or so, or thereabouts, because we're probably not going to have a 466 strike, we're probably going to have a 465 strike, and then defining that risk at some point. So what impacts the cost of the trade is going to be, uh, for the most part, strike selection on the short strike, strike selection on, on the, the short call, and strike selection on the long put, right? So a long put with more protection, meaning closer to the current price of the stock, is going to be more expensive than a long put that's a little bit further out of the money. But buying the long put further out of the money means that there is the potential for greater loss to the downside. And that's what gives us that adjustment in, in terms of tailoring this to the particular circumstances. So we could probably make the argument that we've got a level of support maybe right here at about this four, we'll call it 440 just for the sake of argument, uh, right here at this 440 level. So I'm gonna take that, activate it, and we'll extend that over to the right. There's our 440 strike thereabouts. And we know that we've got a resistance level up here about 465. So let's go to our trade tab for LMT. We'll go through the same process that we've been going through. And again, we don't have a lot of volatil volatility here. So these options are going to be relatively cheaper than they have been just because volatility is pretty low. But we're going to go to the, the expiration date that has a little bit of volatility in it. It's very likely that there's probably an earnings announcement in that uh, expiration date because that implied volatility is, el is elevated just a little bit. So we're going to open that one up the 26th April. We're going to find, again, our short strike, which was going to be the 465. So we're going to scroll down, making sure that our spread is, is uh, selected caller with stock. And we're going to go to the 465 strike. There's our 465 strike. We're going to left click on that 465 strike. And then we're going to adjust our long put strike. So our long put in this case was the 440. Just wanted to cross check that really quickly. We'll come back over here to the 440 strike and we'll look at buying the 440 strike. We'll open up that lock. So 451 to 465. So about $11 of potential gain in the trade. We'll click on confirm and send and see if that's the case. About $13 in this case against $11.70 of uh, downside loss. And again, that cost of the trade, it's going to be capital intensive. If we come back over here and right click and go to the analyze tab, we can see what that trade looks like. And maybe then in that particular case, we say, all right, there's here's the theoretical maximum loss to the downside, theoretical maximum gain. Maybe we tailor this in a little bit. Maybe we nip and tuck that in and we say, all right, I'm going to bring that loss up to the 455. Uh, level, which is where the price of the stock is right now. So maybe that's too tight. So maybe we adjust that and we go, all right, let's go to the 450. And we're reducing that theoretical maximum loss, tightening that up a little bit. It's going to cost more to do that. We click on that uh, uh, lock and open that up. So now here's our theoretical uh, cost to the trade, 455. Theoretical maximum gain in the trade is that four, is up at that 465 level. Makes it a little bit easier to see it and do the math, right? So our 450 strike, that's going to cost us 455 in this particular case. And so we're going to right click and we're going to click on confirm and send. Now our risk went down, total absolute risk went down because we increased the strike price of our put option, but our also our theoretical maximum gain went down as well, but the relationship changed a little bit as well. Theoretically more, almost double the theoretical maximum gain. So if you're more bullish on the stock, that means we've now customized that trade to perhaps be, or bespoke that trade to be a little bit more aggressive. So we're gonna click on protective strategies here, make sure that that's where we're sending it, read through any alerts that we've got here, click on send, and we'll fire that order off. And we'll go over here to the monitor tab, 
And those trades at this point, again, we might have to adjust these and uh, and open up those locks and play with those, maybe bump the prices around a little bit to get those orders uh, to fill. But that's how you might go about uh, putting a collar trade together, customizing it as if it were a buy right covered call type of strategy, but we're including that collar and utilizing some of the tools here on the Thinkorswim platform to be able to make those uh, collar trades bespoke to what the circumstances might uh, dictate based on the chart. And Wiley asks a great question here, putting collar on along synthetic. Um, so if you think about then build a synthetic long stock position, then putting a collar around that, what tends to happen is you start to layer those strategies together. One consideration in that circumstance might very well be making sure that you don't create embedded vertical spreads that you're unaware of uh, that might fill that might fill or create inadvertent short positions. The other thing to think about is the long stock position here, which is the big driver of the trade, we've created some flexibility around that. But remember that stocks are different than synthetics, than synthetic creations of that long stock in that the stock doesn't expire. The stock may generate uh, voting rights, it may uh, provide dividends as well. None of those are guaranteed, but the, the we know that one thing that's guaranteed is the underlying stock does not expire. So something to think about in comparing analogs of synthetics to an underlying stock position. So let's pop back over here. We got kind of deep pretty quick in this discussion, which is great. And, and I like the fact that uh, you guys were following along with this. We talked about protective strategies, in this case, a bespoke caller on a buy right scenario where we bought the stock and sold and created the caller at the same time we talked about that application of the protective strategy we looked at three different examples here on the platform my thanks again to cameron may uh for helping out today and answering the questions by the way you can follow me uh and cameron on x formerly known as twitter i'm at ben watson cs cameron is at cameron may cs uh, that gives me a great opportunity, Wiley, and I appreciate the comments to think about what, some of the things that we can teach in further sessions. So thanks again for being here, everyone. Click on subscribe if you haven't already, uh, and then uh, stick around for upcoming webcasts uh, throughout the day today. My thanks again to Cameron May and our great production staff for helping out with uh, this webcast today. We'll see you again very soon. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.